Excel tutorial financial ratios. Financial ratios consist of relative magnitudes of selected financial statements numerical values. Main financial ratios analysis areas are operating activities, investing activities, liquidity, solvency, and profitability. This topic is part of stock fundamental analysis with Excel Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of the video. Operating activity ratios consist of determining how efficiently resources were managed in the short term. Average inventory processing period consists of determining how many days it took to turn inventory into sales. As a formula, the average inventory processing period is equal to 365 days divided by the inventory turnover. Inventory turnover is equal to the cost of sales divided by the average inventory. Average receivables collection period consists of determining how many days it took to receive payments owed. As a formula, average receivables collection period is equal to 365 days divided by receivables turnover. Receivables turnover is equal to net sales divided by the average accounts receivables. An average payables payment period consists of determining how many days it took to pay off suppliers. As a formula, the average payables payment period is equal to 365 days divided by the payables turnover. Payables turnover is equal to the cost of sales divided by the average accounts payable. Great, so let's go into the Excel file so that we can study the operating activity ratios with greater detail. Excellent. So here we are within Financial Ratios Excel file. For the calculation of operating activity ratios, we'll be using data included within Balance Sheet and Income Statement Red Color Worksheets. Within Balance Sheet Worksheet, we have Apple Inc with its sticker symbol AAPL, Consolidated Balance Sheet. Notice the source of this data, which is Apple's Annual Reports or 10K Forms. Within it, we have balance sheets for two fiscal years, the one ending at September 24 of 2016 and the one ending at September 30th of 2017. Within the Income Statement Worksheet, we have Apple Inc's, again, with its ticker symbol AAPL, Consolidated Statement of Operations, or Income Statement. Same source, Apple's Annual Reports, or 10K Forms. In this case, we have data only for the fiscal year ending at September 30th of 2017. Notice here that these are the 12 months ended at that specific date. An important distinction when calculating our corresponding financial ratios is that when we compare accounts from the balance sheet and the income statement, we should take into consideration that the accounts within the balance sheet should be considered as a snapshot in time. On the other hand, Within the income statement, those accounts should be considered as what happens in between snapshots. That's why, as you might remember from the slides, we calculated the average of the accounts related to the balance sheet. So going into the operating activity blue color worksheet, we'll be doing the calculation of those three ratios 
and will do so for the fiscal year ending in September of 2017. I also included data for the fiscal year ending at September of 2016, as we can see here within the comment that those corresponding ratios are from my calculations. Also, we have the distinction. We can observe here those ratios have a white background, while these ones have a blue colored background. So let's begin with those calculations. By selecting cell B8 here, we have the average inventory processing period calculation. Within the formula bar, we see that it's equal to 365 days, which is divided by the inventory turnover, which by itself here, we see it equals to, within parenthesis, the corresponding cost of sales divided by the average inventory. So notice that they are found within their corresponding worksheets. So if we go into income statement, at B8, we have that cost of sales. And if we go into the balance sheet, specifically here within those assets and the current assets, we have B11 and C11 for those inventories. So going back into operating activity, the next ratio is the average receivables collection period. If we select cell B10, we see that it's equal to 365 divided by, and here we have within parentheses, in this case is income statement V7 with those net sales divided by the corresponding average of those account receivables found at balance sheet B10 to C10. So first going into income statement, as mentioned, at B7, we have those net sales. And going into the balance sheet, again, within those assets, and specifically current assets, and at cells B10 and C10, we have those account receivables net. And last, going back into the operating activity worksheet, we have the average payables payment period. So we select cell B12. And we see within the formula bar that it's equal to 365 divided by, and here we have, within parentheses, income statement B8, which is that corresponding cost of sales, which is then divided by the average of those corresponding accounts payable found at balance sheet B22 and C22. So here we go into income statement first, and again, as mentioned, at B8, we have cost of sales. And going into the balance sheet, in this case, we need to go down into liabilities. And specifically here, within liabilities, current liabilities at B22 and C22, we have those accounts payable. So there we have the calculation of those corresponding three ratios. And as we can see, when comparing those ratios in the fiscal year ending at September 2017 with the one at September 2016, we see that the average inventory processing period was greater than in 2016. The average receivables collection period was less than the one in 2016 and the average payables payment period was greater than the one in 2016. Excellent. So now that we've finished studying operating activity ratios, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.